Hey everybody, it's Avi Tenenbaum here. Let's talk about blackouts. I've been getting a request the last 24 hours to make this video, so here we go. Sorry, not edited, not fancy. Time is of the essence. Will Hezbollah knock out Israel's power? The answer is, nobody can know. Only Hezbollah can know, right? And it won't even happen until they go and do it. So we don't know, but we can predict. There are a number of conditions that if those conditions are in place, then it's likely to occur. One of them is that Hezbollah has to have a desire to hurt us, and they do. Okay, check. Do they have the ability to shoot rockets at us? Yes, check. Do they have the ability to target very specific places in our infrastructure that clean our water or run our power? Yes, they do. Check. Did they ever say that they would knock out our power if they could? Reportedly, yes. Check. Okay, so we have all that in place, right? Well, when will they do it, Avi? No idea. It's very hard to know the timeline of things that we don't even know will happen, right? Because like I said, they don't happen till they happen. What a lot of doomsdayers do is they read too much into this hint and that hint and this thing and that thing. And they say, this is happening any moment. This is going to happen. It either will happen or it won't happen. That Hezbollah will knock out our power. And if I had to guess, it might happen. And even if it happens, there's a question of how successful will he be? And how will that impact us? Will that impact all of Israel? Will that impact certain areas? Will that impact certain areas or all of Israel for weeks in a row, or just for a day, or just for three days. Now, has this ever happened before in modern history? Of course. Think of Russia hitting Ukraine with missiles, knocking out their power. And there's a lot of reasons why that would be advantageous to uh, an enemy. First of all, there's no communication. Uh, it's very hard to get anything done. It creates disease, massive disruption, chaos, upheaval, there's a lot of good reasons why a bad guy would want to knock out our power. It's, it's just a smart decision to do, right? Um, yeah, so if it happens, maybe it'll be like Ukraine. What happened in Ukraine? Russia knocked out Ukraine's power several times, but each time because Ukraine were on top of the game and they fixed and repaired, plus other countries that donated to them generators and things like this, they were able to repair this somewhat fast over and over and over. Were they uncomfortable? Yes. Were they cold? Yes. Inconvenienced? Yes. But was it a post-apocalyptic, you know, year-long straight scenario where they had no power? No. So anything could be. Okay. That's as far as can it happen? Yes. Will it happen? Maybe. Is it likely? Probably. What do we do about it? So... If you just woke up now to the world of prepping and survivalism, so I think we should always be prepared somewhat for everything. And we never have to be prepared for absolutely crazy things as individuals, although governments should be prepared for everything, including what's called black swan events, which are like those completely insane, unforeseen events, right? Maybe you don't need rocket launchers and fighter planes in your house, but your country should have them in case there's an invasion, right? Maybe you should have a firearm if you can. Maybe you should be trained on it. Maybe you should have enough magazines and, 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 and ammunition and whatever it is. Fine. Let's talk about the particular scenario of having no power in Israel because of Hezbollah or maybe because of a storm or because of a cyber attack from Iran. There could be so many reasons why this can happen, right? First of all, we have in Israel what's called the Home Front Command. They're like um, America's version of the National Guard. So we have that in Israel, the Home Front Command. It's the army. And this is basically the uh, division of the military in our own country that tells us how to prepare for disasters and deal with disasters. Okay. Um, the Home Front Command forever has been recommending to everybody to have a certain amount of basic supplies in their house for all sorts of emergency scenarios. So I can't tell you their list by heart, but they say to have food, 
water, first aid kit, flashlight, batteries, really basic stuff, um, different documents that you might want to photocopy, a photocopy of your two dots of hoot, your passport, these types of things, fine. Uh, critical phone numbers, write them down on a paper, photocopy them, etc. That's been true forever. It's been true before Hezbollah was shooting rockets at us this time. And before, we're all talking in WhatsApp groups about them knocking out our power. It's always been true, and it's always going to be true. And it's a wise way to live. I have a whole, uh, I think it's even an hour-long video on this in my channel. But I spoke there about the idea that we erroneously outsource everything to the police, to EMS, to the army, the government. And it's a big mistake because all of the organizations that I just said are the most dysfunctional organizations they sit in their ivory towers. They have everything that they need. They have more money than you. They have more security than you, more food, more access to whatever it is that they want. They write the laws that they need to make things happen. And you sit in your house with your family and you don't have all those things. You don't have unlimited money and influence and connections. And uh, you can't just write laws that allow yourself to do things, right? It just doesn't work like that for us. So don't ever over rely not on the police, not on Hatsala or EMS, not on anybody. You should have a minimal amount of supplies in your own house for what they say in the home front command, if I'm not mistaken, is a three day long situation. Maybe we're bunkered in our houses because of an invasion. Maybe there's a barrage of rockets and there's such a big salvo nonstop from the tens of thousands of missiles and rockets that Hezbollah has that you just can't go outside to buy some milk. Maybe it's a cyber attack, there's no power. Because there's no power, there's no pumps, there's no sanitation, there's no there's no cell towers, everything in the infrastructure collapses because we are over-reliant on the grid, etc., right? At least for three days, be prepared. If you want to ask me very, very specifically, Avi, what did you do to prepare for the possible blackout that we may have? So... I'll tell you what I did, but I didn't do it now. I did this years ago because I lived this way as a way of life. When I think about prepping and being prepared in a survival situation because the grid is down, things aren't working, you're stuck at home, I think of different broad categories that you need to cover, different bases that you need to cover. You're going to need water because people need water to live. If you have a family, so now your entire family needs water to live. So it's not just the amount that you use per day, but what they use per day. Even if it's just for drinking, what about for cooking? What about for cleaning things and washing our hands and sanitation? You're going to need water. How do you calculate the amount of water? Look online. There's all sorts of ways of doing it. How do you store the water? Go look that up. But we need water. Okay. You can't use tap water because what if there's no pumps? What if it's not clean? What if it's poisoned? You're going to need a way to purify your own water. I'm not going to come and tell you how to do it, but I have several systems in my own house. I'm, I'm very frugal. I don't have a lot of extra money right now. I save it up for my kids. I want to make weddings and buy them houses. You know, So I, I'm not building doomsday bunkers that are millions of dollars, but inexpensive items and knowledge I do have. Okay, So having water filters, tablets, uh, knowing how to purify water with iodine. I have books at home with the formulas and how to do that. So the idea is there's something called water. You drink it every day. So does your family, friends, roommates, whoever lives with you. Make sure to figure out how to have water for at least three days. Okay, check. Water. Well, what about food? What if you only have lots of food in your freezer and it's the type of food you have to thaw out and then cook and now we're in a grid down situation because there's a power outage for a week and a half, right? And maybe after two and a half days, Israel even has the ability to fix the power, by the way. But for some crazy political reason, somebody like Biden, who apparently runs our country, even though he's not even the president here, but apparently he is, he makes all the decisions. What if he says, well, we're not going to help you or let other people help you with generators or engineers or whatever it is, unless you promise ABC, right? See, you really don't know how long these events will last, but you're going to need food. So it should be food that you don't have a problem making, eating, cooking, storing when there's no power. So think of dry food. Think of food that has a shelf life for a reasonable amount of time. It could be canned food. 
It could be dry food, vacuum-packed food. I'm not going to talk about this now because online also you have a whole world about this. And um, just make sure you have enough food for three days that doesn't need a fridge. It's that simple. Next. So we covered food. We covered water. What about lights? You probably want to see a little bit in your house so you don't bump into each other and you know where stuff is because right now it gets dark at like 5.30 p.m. where we are. And imagine there's no power and you're going to be up for a bunch of hours and you have to go cook noodles in the dark for your kids. Good luck with that. And we're going to talk about cooking soon, right? You're going to need light. So have some tea lights, have some candles, have some emergency lights that when the power goes off, then those lights go on. There are light bulbs you can get that, that will keep going on when the power is out. There's all sorts of solutions that are inexpensive as far as lighting goes. So make sure you just have a way to see. Make sure you have a flashlight. I have a flashlight with me. Here's a Nightcore 1000 lumen flashlight. What model is this? The MT2A Pro. Great flashlight, fits in my pocket, very thin, simple. I have a bunch of night cores. I also have a great flashlight on my keychain. We have on our phone, we have in different places, but think about you and whenever you do a prep of any scenario, think about other people too. Your wife or your husband now needs a light because they're going to take out the garbage and they can't see. So now you need two flashlights. Now you want some sort of emergency light in the living room or a candle, a lantern. Make sure you don't burn your house down, but have a way to have lighting. So we said food, water, lighting. Okay. Well, what about power? Or again, I'm, I'm not trying to replace the internet now. There's a thousand different ways of creating power depending on your needs. During a grid down situation, I personally am not affluent enough to try to run all of my appliances with tons of generators and to store gasoline. It's, it's not my thing. I'm not looking for that. But I am looking for a basic way to charge small appliances if I need. I want to charge my phone if for some reason I need information written down on that phone because I don't even know if there's going to be service, but I really need some address that's written down in there and I can't get to it unless I charge my phone. Um, I want to charge those emergency lights. Maybe it's an unbearably hot day and I want to run a fan a little bit because I just can't sleep. So I personally have a massive power bank that costs like 300 bucks and it, and it can charge your phone for days and days and days in a row. It can run small appliances for several hours in a row. And this way you can just charge up whatever you need. You know, you have your flashlights that are chargeable. So now you can charge those, etc. Okay. I also have, by the way, solar powered flashlights as well so that we can charge them that way. They have a panel in the flashlight, etc. So there's solutions of how to generate power. And you should be seeking to have multiple ways of charging and powering your items. So let's say this, for example, it also can be charged with the USB cable. It can also be powered with AA batteries. So there's just different ways of making this thing work. And I have plenty of extra batteries at home, AA, AAA, and so on. Okay. I'm not even talking about if somebody has a medical de uh, device and they need power to run it, then you're going to need to figure this out and you're going to need to understand how much power you need to create and for how much time and sort that out. Okay. So we talked about power, lighting, food, water. Let's talk about cooking. Simple way to cook that's somewhat safe is to have a gas camping stove with gas balloons that you cook on, right? So I have one of those. If you ever went camping, you want to make some coffee, you want to make a shakshuka, an egg in the middle of the forest. See, so you have that little like metal thing that you attach onto a gas balloon and then you have a way to cook, right? And you're going to need a pot, obviously, and you're going to need water and you're going to need food to cook like noodles or rice or whatever it is that you're looking to cook. So the food store I have, gas I have, the piece you put onto the gas balloon I have, uh, and then I have other solutions as well, like I forgot what they're called, rocket stoves right, where you can kind of create fuel for your stove from pieces of wood that you find on the outside, debris, and you kind of feed this into the side of this metal stand and you put the pot on top and that's just a way to cook. And just like the old school people that they cooked things without their fancy electric stoves and, and, and things like that, 
we'll just have to cook the, the good old way, right? You're going to have to have a way to light that gas. So matches, lighters, etc. Okay, so think about cooking. You're going to want to cook noodles three days into a big blackout and there's no power. So have a way to do that. So we spoke about water, food, cooking, power, light. You know, so you want to think about all these broad categories of what bases you need to cover. And you should be purchasing these things. Now, I never wanted to spend money on these things. There are people that overdo it and buy things that they don't need. There are things that people buy that maybe they need, but they never learn how to use them. I think if you buy a survival book that you would enjoy reading, that's a real professional book, not a gimmicky book, because there's a lot of gimmicks out there, but a real book like Michael Hawk's uh, Green Beret Survival Book, I really like. People like the SAS Survival Book. I personally don't like it, but it, I mean, it has fantastic information. I just, I have too many learning disabilities to read it from cover to cover. But just the knowledge is important. Understanding in your head how things work. Like, how do you go to the bathroom and dispose of waste when there's no pumps and there's no power? You don't want dysentery and diseases. So you're going to have to now figure out a way to make a latrine, a latrine right? You're going to have to dig some sort of outhouse far away from your house and tell all of your neighbors to go poop over there and make it modest so people feel comfortable and people aren't staring at them. And you're going to have to do this in a way that you can kind of bury it on top later on. People won't get diseases and you're going to have to teach people to try to keep up the sanitation as much as they can so people don't get sick. We don't want to now be using the bathroom but not using our hands, uh, not, not using soap on our hands and then suddenly we're putting food in our mouth and we're getting sick. We don't want that. Really not good, right? So these are things you have to learn about and think about. If you're just waking up now, it's never too late. The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The next best time is today. So I was saying before, I never wanted to spend money on learning these things and having basic supplies until one day somebody made a very simple argument. They said, you spend so much money on insurance for things that may never happen. Car insurance, health insurance, very fancy health insurance for extremely ex um, exotic events that may never happen. Why wouldn't you take three or four hundred dollars one time in your life and just buy some extra food, extra water, cooking supply, basic stuff, right? A way to make a fire, a way to light that uh, rocket stove up so you can make your noodles, a little pot. You know, simple, simple, simple. A way to purify that water. So, so obvious that that's worthwhile. Now, if you watch this video and you have absolutely money, uh, no money and you're broke, be frugal. Don't worry, you'll figure it out. But at least get the knowledge. There's stuff you can download for free. There's 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 no shortage of videos online and channels and preppers. There are different types of preppers. There are some people that they call the uh, tinfoil hat type that they're always um, doomsdaying everything and assuming the worst case scenario every single second and scaring people. I don't like that type. It, it promotes a lot of anxiety. I think we can just be normal people but smart people. I don't think there's any advantage of working ourselves up into a frenzy and being anxious, but I do think it's wise to prepare for eventualities that might happen. And especially if it's inexpensive to do so, it's just smart. That's it. That's all this is. It's just being wise, having some clairvoyance peeking into the future and saying, this may happen, right? I live in such and such a place. For example, I live in Israel. What are the likely scenarios that might come to my doorstep that I have to deal with? If you, if you live in California, you have to think about earthquakes. You have to think, you have to think about uh, forest fires, right? Anticipating what might occur. Mass shootings in America, they happen like every three weeks, depending on how you calculate it, right? But they, but they happen. What do you do about that, etc.? Okay, so I hope we covered our bases. We spoke about if this will happen and what to do if it happens. Go out there, educate yourselves, stock up a little bit, learn how to use your tools, put a smile on your face, be happy, have faith in God. And this is life, guys. Life is full of challenges. No matter what country you live in, there's challenges. It's not only Israel. America has challenges. Everyone's got challenges. Okay? The UK has its challenges. Australia has... Every country's got its challenges because life is challenging, but we can be resourceful, we can be resilient, creative, have grit, 
Educate ourselves, be happy, smile, and we can do this.